What I'm going to teach you in today's video has been responsible for over $20 million in online sales. It's been proven in a multitude of different industries, and this can work for webinars, stage presentations, or even sales videos. If you sell coaching, courses, services, or anything over the price point of $2,000, you absolutely need this framework if you want to convert more strangers into paying clients. So let's get straight into it. From start to finish, this framework is about 30 minutes okay now before we go any further and before i break down every single thing you need to say and do to turn someone from a stranger to a ready to buy high ticket client you need to understand the context of where this framework would work best i've been using it for webinars it works incredibly well if you're going to invite someone to an online training event that's only going to last 30 minutes and here's the kicker points people to a phone conversation does not attempt to sell them right there in the webinar. I actually have an, an online event where I teach this and I call it the future of webinars. The game has changed. I don't have enough time in this video to dive into that, but the game's changed completely. We now no longer focus on selling products and services in webinar presentations. Instead, we use this 30 minute uh, future of webinars framework that sets up everything that we need to be set up to get someone on the phone, but not just anyone on the phone, someone who is ready, eager, and able to sign up for your high ticket programs. So you need to keep that in mind. This is a value heavy presentation that leads to someone who's ready to become a client. So we break up this framework into three sections. I call them three phases. Phase one over here is called setting the stage. This is where we are preparing the audience that we've invited onto this presentation. And again, if this is in the context of a webinar, which for me it often is, then I'm well aware that someone who registers for a webinar and attends the presentation has no commitment to stick around for the whole thing. They may not get to the end. So I need to do and say the right stuff in the beginning to keep them locked into the presentation. If you're gonna use this framework for a stage presentation, same thing. We don't want people getting an excuse to get up out of their chair and leaving. And furthermore, if you're gonna use this as a sales video, a video embedded on a sales funnel page, we don't wanna give any reason for someone to go, nah, this is boring and click off that page. So there's some really important stuff we do in the setting of the stage. We're gonna come back to that in a moment. The second phase here in the middle, this is the training. This is where we're actually going to give some value to the audience that sets up the coaching that you're going to be offering them later on in the process. There's a very, very particular way that we need to create and craft this training material. And I'm gonna break that down for you in just a second as well. And then third and finally, we have what I call the hand raise. This is where essentially we're doing the CTA, the call to action. We're getting people to that place where they say, yep, hand raise, I'm in, I'm interested. I would like to talk about the products and services that you have. And then of course that leads to someone booking that call with you. Now, I'm gonna break this down for you in this video, but if you want the extended version of this, I run a two day event called the Future of Webinars where over the course of two days and about six hours of content, I break this down, teach you every single little element and show you how you can scale your business to realistically seven figures if you understand this framework properly. So there's a link in the description box. Go check it out. It's called The Future of Webinars. I'd love to have you attend that event, particularly if you love what you're going to hear uh, today in this video. So in the setting of the stage, we're going to actually break this up even further. There are three elements to the setting of the stage and you've got to get these right. The first element, and this is going to get a bit messy, so bear with me. The first element is the hook. This is going to last only about two minutes, not long at all. In fact, the entire setting of the stage, let's just block it off here. The entire setting of the stage is only gonna be about five to 10 minutes. That's it, five to 10 minutes for the setting of the stage. So the hook is only gonna take up about two or three minutes worth of that. The hook is where we are making it clear to the audience that they're in the right place, that they need what they're about to learn about and they should keep their virtual bum in their virtual seat on this particular webinar. It's a waste of time on your webinar presentations to start you know, faffing about, hi, my name's John Pemothy and you know, I'm super excited for today's presentation. Let me know where you're calling in from and we do this whole thing for five minutes. That is where you get a significant drop off because people are going, nah, I don't really like this, I'm gonna leave. 
So you've got to hit the ground running. You've got to start your webinar presentation and immediately make it clear what this webinar is, who it's for, how it's gonna help them, and why they should stick around. So that's the hook. You spend two or three minutes on hooking them into the presentation. The next thing that we do, okay, is we talk about them, okay? We talk about them. We don't go too fast into talking about ourselves. We like to talk about ourselves, and that often comes out too quickly in a presentation. News flash, your audience don't care about you. They actually care about the problem that they have that you're attempting to solve. So what we need to do in the next two to three minutes is we need to basically describe their situation. I call it displayed understanding. We're gonna to display to them through the words that we're saying and the illustrations that we have on the slides that we understand them, we get their situation, we understand the pain that they're currently going through, and we do have a solution that's going to be able to help them. The better we could articulate the problem that they've got, the more it's gonna feel like they're on this webinar looking into a mirror. It's gonna feel like you are describing this presentation just for them, and that's the feeling that we're after. And then finally, what we're doing is now we can talk about you in the final part of the setting of the stage. Now that we've hooked their attention, we've kept them in. Now that we've talked about them and we've made sure they feel understood, now we can move to talking about why you're an authority in this area. Talk about some credibility pieces if you have them so that they now understand why for them to get the result that they've just had brought back to the surface, you're the right person to teach them. That is how you properly set the stage on a webinar presentation and it only takes five to 10 minutes within this framework. Now, by the way, I wanna say at this point that I've played with this framework a lot. I've moved these things around and this is the perfect way that it needs to be done. So don't change it. The next section in this framework is the training right here, okay? Now you understand that the entire framework is, is 30 minutes. The training is going to be about 20 minutes for this section here. And believe it or not, we actually break this up again into the magic number of three. Okay, you'll see three coming up in marketing a lot. And it's really because, side note, two doesn't feel complete enough. If you say I've got a two-step system, I've got two things to teach you, it doesn't feel complete enough, it doesn't feel meaty enough. But if we start going into four, five, six, seven, eight steps, it feels too much. Three is a really nice number that works well in lots of different areas of marketing. Anyway, I digress. In the training section, we also want to break it up into three things. Three things that we're going to teach them, three things that's going to provide them value and is going to position what it is that you'd like to sell them later on. The beauty of this particular framework is because we're not actually going to be selling them anything at the end of this webinar, we can be less strategic with how much value we give versus how much value we withhold, right? Maybe you've been on a webinar presentation in the past and you have committed two hours to this webinar only to find that you get to the very end and there was very little value actually given and it really just felt like you were in a glorified sales presentation, right? That's not the feeling we wanna give people in this particular framework. But the benefit that we have is that we're not selling anything. So because we're not selling anything, we can be a little bit more open, a little bit more free with actually providing value. So what I want you to think about is what are three things, three focus points that you can have that is going to position what it is that you do, that's gonna provide a bit of value, give people what I like to call wow moments. Give them that moment where they go, wow, this is good, wow, this makes sense, but they don't necessarily know the hows, right? A way to remember this is they come to your presentation for the wow, but then they invest in your coaching for the how. So we wanna give them those wow moments. We wanna give them those epiphanies. We wanna turn those light bulbs on in their heads. So break up what it is that you do, how you help people, what your audience needs to understand about the solution to the problem that they have, and then break it up into three things. I'll give you an example. On one of my most successful webinars, one single webinar presentation that's done in excess of $3 million from one slide deck, okay? My three training points were as follows. Number one, I focused on the biggest mistakes that coaches make 
in my industry. At the end of this particular presentation, I'm inviting people that sell coaching and courses to have a chat with a member of my team to see if what we have is a good fit. And so what I do in my first point is I break down all the mistakes that coaches in our space are often making, but they're all mistakes that point out that I have a solution to each and every one of those mistakes. It also elevates my authority because I'm pointing out the things that are going wrong in the industry and subconsciously by default, they will then assume that because I'm highlighting those, I must have the answer to those as well. I'm also using some of those mistakes to position things that are important for me to attract my dream client avatar. For example, we only work with people who sell something for a high ticket price point. So if they sell something for $500, we can't really help them because it doesn't work in our framework. So one of the mistakes that I mentioned is that most online coaches are dramatically undercharging themselves. And then I teach them very, very quickly. I teach them how and why they should be increasing their prices. So I'm giving them that moment of, wow, that makes sense. Okay, I think I'm gonna increase my prices and I'm getting someone closer to the type of avatar that I want on the phone. So that's just one example. Now imagine that seven or eight times if I'm doing a list of seven or eight biggest mistakes. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to register for the Future of Webinars two-day event. We break this down in excruciating detail and I talk about the traffic that we use to flood these presentations, the funnel that we build and the offers that we sell out the other end, a complete A to Z system. I'd love to have you on our upcoming uh, two-day event. Anyway, back to the training. The second thing that I want to position because we teach it is YouTube advertising. So my entire second training point is just positioning why YouTube is so amazing, why it's better than every other traffic platform, why paid advertising makes so much sense over the alternative for organic traffic or any other potential option. So at the end of training point two, They've had their mind you know, opened and expanded and they're like, wow, okay, YouTube paid ads are the way to go. The third thing that I need to position is webinars. This whole YouTube video right now is all about the power of webinars and this presentation framework. And so that's what we teach, that's what we focus on with clients. So I need to position that too. So in training point three, I'm breaking down why webinars are so powerful, how I'm using them, uh, why they're so profitable for us, and again, why they beat every other potential sales funnel that's an option. So now you can imagine that after 20 minutes of some great information that's given them loads of epiphanies, loads of light bulb moments, loads of wow moments, you can imagine at the end of this training section as we move into the hand raise, they're in a position where they're excited about this topic now. They realize the mistakes that they're making, they know they need YouTube ads and webinars and why they work so well together, but they don't know how to implement it. They've come for the wow, and now if they want to investigate the how, we can have a chat about that. So now we're gonna invite them to speak with us on the phone, but not just in any old simple way of saying, hey, if you're interested, book a call and I'd love to speak with you. No, there's a, a strategic way that we need to position the phone call. So it's not gonna be a 30 second invitation. It actually takes about five minutes. And it's because we're also gonna break this up into three sections, okay? The magic three again. The first thing we wanna do as we transition from training to hand raise is we need to do what I like to call inspire change. You might wanna write that down in your notes, inspire change. We want to speak to, for about a minute or two, we want to speak to the fact that they can't stay where they are. They can't have been exposed to all of this now and now just go back to doing what they were doing before. We need to make a change. And here's why we've got to make a change. And you've got to take that step. So we're inspiring them to make a decision to change. So that's what we do first. The second thing is we make the invitation to book a call. We present the opportunity to uh, book a call on our calendar, have a chat, get to know each other, and see if our coaching is a potential good fit. And we tease it at that point as well. We make it very clear that that's what this phone call is for. This phone call is to see if we're a good fit to work together. I don't want you offering these calls as a strategy session, as a coaching session. If you do that, they're gonna be expecting far too much value, and they're gonna be surprised when you make an offer at the end. We actually wanna make it really clear that we're on the phone to speak about uh, whether my coaching is a good fit. And that's gonna get you much better qualified people 
on the foam. And then the final piece, the third piece of the hand raise, is that we create a little bit of urgency. So we talk about the fact the webinar is about to end, this opportunity to book a call you may never see again. We've only got limited spaces on the calendar and of course once they're booked, they're booked. So we're going to implement a little bit of urgency to, to get them to uh, make that decision to book the call with us. So that's my 30 minute presentation framework to take strangers all the way to ready to buy hot prospects. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to our channel. We've got new content coming out every week. And if you want to now learn about the traffic that we send into these presentations, then there's a video up here that you can click on. It's going to break down the YouTube advertising side of things for you as well. I hope you enjoy that and I'll see you in a future video.